every single cell in Excel can be customized to suit your exact requirements. In this case, we're talking mostly about formatting, but you'll see there's a whole bunch of other options you can do. So just in this example, you'll see we've got some data, looks okay, but perhaps we want a little bit more information here. So the way to format cells is you can click on one or many and then tell Excel what to do. So for example, these are numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's highlight all these numbers. Now there's multiple ways of accessing the formatting. So our preferred way is either right click and you'll see something called format cells or the shortcut, and we do use it quite a bit, is control one and it pops up the same thing. That will go through now, but all those items actually are under the home tab. So you'll see there's a whole bunch of items here which can affect the font and do you want to bold it and where it must sit and merge and center. So these are effectively visual shortcuts to what we're going to do now. So once you're familiar with what you want, you may find you use these or the shortcut method, but we're going to show it in the form where you can actually see all of them. So I'm going to push control one and you'll start from the left and you'll see we have the ability to format cells. What this is saying is we've highlighted these cells. How do you want it formatted? If we say general, then Excel will just apply its best guess. At the moment it doesn't look too bad, but if you had decimals it may look a bit messy. You'll see there's a whole bunch of options here. So there's a whole bunch of number options. So if I choose the number option, you'll see it asks you how many decimal places do you want. And over here, it's looking at the first cell it sees and telling you what that one will look like with the setup. So maybe I want another decimal, you'll see it shows there. Do you want to split the thousands? So for example, these numbers here, do we want a little bit of a space here so we can see the thousands? So I do quite like that, I'm going to choose that. And how do you want to treat negative numbers? Must it just have a negative sign? Must it turn red? Must it have a negative and turn red? So I quite like that one. When I say OK, you'll notice that the formatting on that changes. If we just go back to that, you'll see with numbers there's a whole bunch of things you can do. Perhaps you want a currency. So you actually want to see the currency in front. So rands or perhaps you want Australian dollars quite a popular one, US dollar, so when I say OK, it now puts the dollar symbol there. Just going back into that, you'll see there's an accounting option. So these first three generally relate to numbers. So the accounting option is quite useful. Again, everything looks the same, but when I say OK, watch what happens with the zeros. So zeros have a little dash. It's still a zero, Excel treats it as a zero. It's quite nice though visually to see it that way. So those, that's how you can format numbers. Keep in mind that all the formatting you can do to text, so if you want to change the size, the font, make it bold, etc. can happen, but those are the things you typically do with numbers. The other option that is number-like, and you'll understand that a lot better later in the more advanced courses, is dates. So you'll see I've got a whole bunch of dates here. If I go into formatting, you'll see that there's a number of items there. So there's a date and time option if you're using time. And this allows you to choose a different date format. So as long as Excel knows this is a date, you then can choose to perhaps show it like that. So you want everything to be shown year, month, day. When I say OK, notice they all change. I just undid. If I go back there, go to date, maybe I'd like to see the day of the week in front or perhaps I want it spelled out I want to see the name of the month when I say OK you see it appears like that so there's a whole bunch of formatting you can do on dates you just have to be a little bit careful and make sure that Excel actually understands that it is a date let's just look at some of the other options you'll see there's percentages so if you want to get fancy with percentages fractions scientific notation You'll see there's something here called text. Now text you'd think would be fairly obvious. You know, if I highlight those 
and I look at the formatting by default it's general and Excel has assumed it's text. We can force it to become text by clicking on that cell there and although it doesn't seem to have done much this will become important when you actually have numbers that aren't really numbers. So for example ID numbers that although they look like a number you want them to act like text. So that's quite important. And then there's a custom option right at the bottom which we'll cover a little bit later. Let's look at what else is available in the format cells. So I'm going to go control one again. Next we have a tab called alignment and you'll see in the home tab we've actually got an alignment section as well and sometimes these are actually quite useful because you can see exactly what they mean. That is showing that something's going to go to the top, middle, bottom, left, middle, right. So we'll get to those just now but what you can see is alignment is we've highlighted some text. What is the horizontal alignment? General is the default but I can say left when I click on it that's already left. If I go center and I say OK you'll see it now is aligned down the center. You'll see I can have right and there's a couple of other options that you can choose so you can see these various options. What you can do as well is you can vertically align it. So can you see here this date because this row is a bit wider what we could say is well all of these I'm going to go to my alignment and now the vertical is currently set to center but maybe I prefer it at the top. So when I click top and I say OK you'll see they move up so they're all starting at that point. You'll see as well in here we've got a couple of other options so you'll see there's an orientation item here so by default text goes nicely left to right. But If you want to start getting fancy let's make it look like that when I say OK you'll see it just puts it at an angle. Just some of the other options in there you've got an option called wrap text so I'm just going to switch it off so you can see what it does. So you'll see here you can see this one here projected cost just this column's too small it cannot fit it all in and for whatever reason we don't want to increase the column um, width. So what we can do is I can tell it that these items here they must always wrap text and what that means is if there's not enough space to put it on one line in that same cell put it on another line. So you'll see it now appears there. Just going back here you've got something called shrink to fit so if I switch the wrap text off and say shrink to fit you'll see what happens to projected costs it'll make it as small as possible to fit into that column so you'll see in this case it's just a little bit too small I've just undone it you'll see there's something called merge cells we don't really recommend you use it but if you want just to show you how it works there's something called format cells. I've decided I, I no longer want a separate cell B1 and C1. I'm going to highlight them and I can go and say merge cells and you'll see what will happen to this little grid line. Notice that it's now one cell. So if I go from D, I can't, can't click in C only. It's actually both of them. To unmerge it, you just switch it off and you'll see you can control the right to left context as well. Just looking here, the next thing we can control is the font. So this is all to do with the font, the size, etc. In the ribbon you'll see it's all over here. You can control what the font is, what the size is, is it bold, etc. So all those, those areas. So this is fairly normal stuff. You'll see you can control the color of the text. So either here or we can come here and say I want this text to be red for example you'll see it now turns red. There are one or two useful things here. There's these effects. So you'll see you've got something called strike through and they're just showing you what it's going to do. If I click strike through a line gets drawn through it. So when I say OK you'll see we have a line there. So that's quite useful if you're saying something's done. You've got something called a superscript. So I'm going to actually just go out of here. 
and let's say we want to put m2 so we wanted to say meter squared what we can do is I can highlight just the two I push control one and I say superscript and I say okay you can see it's put the two just above the M if I control one again and now say subscript you'll see it puts it at the bottom so you can see you can control that but interestingly enough notice that you don't have to control the whole cell you can identify individual items so I can actually highlight that I could go control one but I'm actually going to change here I'm going to say that two I want it to be red so I click on red and when I click enter notice the two is only formatted as red so you've got quite a bit of control over what you can do just continuing with the format cells so if we go control one that's the font lots of stuff you can do there you'll see there's an option for borders so I'm just going to highlight you'll see we have got a border here but I'm just going to highlight those for now when I go control one under borders you can control exactly what it needs to look like so you can see that Excel already realizes that the tops have got a line and the bottoms have got a line and they look like this the border section you'll see over here we've got a little shortcut and sometimes this is quite useful so we can click on it and you'll see there's various options here but just if you're going to go through this method if I go control one I can decide that maybe this bottom line should be a double line so I'm going to click on that and then I tell it that the bottom must be a double line I can also maybe specify that the bottom must be a color so let's make it a, I don't know, a red so now you'll see that's red it's not red here yet I'm going to just click on it and you'll see it's now going to be a red border maybe let's click on this one here click there. so you'll see we've made it red when I say OK you'll see the border has been set up so you can set up borders or grid lines to see them as you want to see them continuing with our format cells so you'll see the border options there then we've got something called fill and that does exactly what it says it fills the cell with a variety of colors so let's go here and let's say we just want to add some color to these cells I can go in here you'll see you have a whole bunch of options I can choose maybe a light gray when I say OK you see it fills it in so you'll see you've got all these options you also have the ability to choose more colors so if you know the exact color you want you can specify it here you, you'll see you've got something called fill effects and that's where you can control maybe you want to get fancy and have colors gently going from one color to another you'll see you've also got patterns so if I click on here I can choose a color and then there's all the pattern styles so maybe I want these to have these little dots on them and maybe they should be a bluey color when I say OK you can just barely see it it just gives it a bit of texture so each cell can be not only can the font be colored but the cell itself can be filled the last item in the format cells is the protection tab and this is covered generally in later courses intermediate or advanced courses just be aware it's there so what we've gone through is all the ways you can format a cell everything we've gone through we've shown you effectively what happens when you right click and format cells or we'll go control one but as you get more used to it you'll realize that if you use bold a lot control B bolds it control B again and bold it so there are a whole bunch of shortcuts generally speaking all the items you want are here just depends how you want to access them